Kia ora year 9. In this video I'm going through questions 22 to 39 from the practice algebra test. So these are relational thinking questions and you have to link skills together. So they're a bit of a step up on the first 21 questions. You definitely need to make sure you've got the individual skills down easily first. So in question 22 we have to simplify and the big idea here is like terms. And that's because I'm looking at adding and subtracting different terms. So if the letters match up, they can go together. So that means that the 7p squared goes with the negative 4p squared, or the takeaway 4p squared. The takeaway 11p goes with takeaway another p. And then we've got this leftover 1 just sitting on the end. So my answer for this one will be 7 takeaway 4 is 3, so 3 p squared, I've got negative 11 p minus p, so minus 12 p plus 1. In the next one, we're multiplying, we're not adding. So this has got nothing to do with like terms now. And I think this is one place that year nines often can get really confused, is when we start to put the different skills together. So if that's what's happening to you, go back through your notes or your worksheets and just go over the separate skills and then see how they're different. So here I'm multiplying the numbers, the coefficients, so 6 twos are 12, and then I've got a squared times a cubed. When I've got the same base, I just need to add the powers. So that's my answer. Now just in case you've forgotten why that rule works, it's because 6a squared means 6 times a times a, times 2 times a times a times a. And we can reorder that because the order of multiplication doesn't matter. But we don't want to have to go through all of that drama every time. So we want you to get pretty comfortable with knowing that we're just going to add the powers when we've got the same base. Okay, on to the next one. So here we have to remember our bed mass rules because we've got multiplication here and here, and then we've got some addition. So the first thing we do is we do our multiplication. We never write 5 times b in algebra, we write 5b. Then we're going to have plus b plus b squared. So all of that early work we did on bed mass is coming in here. So now we can put the 5b and the b together because they're like terms. And we get 6b plus b squared. Right, number 25 is a division problem. And this is the skill that I think is the hardest out of the four operations. So we have 15 v to the 6 over 3b squared. First we work with the coefficients. What's 15 divided by 3? Well, it's 5. Next we look at the powers. We've got b to the power of 6 divided by b squared. The base is the same, so we can subtract one power from the other. Here I've got b to the power of 6 in the numerator and b squared in the denominator. 6 minus 2 is 4, so we get 5b to the power of 4. So let's again write that out just once with what that means. b to the power of 6 means b times b times b and so on 6 times. And it can really help to do this because we remember that anything divided by itself is equal to 1. Right, so if I have 17 divided by 17, that's equal to 1. So here, b divided by b is 1. b divided by b is 1. And that leaves me with the b to the power of 4 part. And then 15 divided by 3 is where the 5 comes from. Well, number 26 has a couple of ways to do it. We're multiplying fractions, just like we did with numbers. So we can multiply the numerator and get 8x. And we can multiply the denominator and get 3x. But I'm not finished yet because I've got a common factor. First, look at the numbers and look for a common factor. There isn't one, so that's good. We're going to end up with an 8 and a 3. But look at the x's. We've got x divided by x. x divided by x is just 1. So the answer is 8 thirds. Okay, so this is not simplified, but this is simplified. On to the next one. This is a division problem, and it works just like number fraction division. Maths is quite good like that. Right, so when I see a fraction, and I'm dividing by a fraction, I multiply by the reciprocal. Right, so it's 2c over 5, 
times 4 over 3d. Now I can multiply the numerators, and I get 8c, and I multiply the denominators, and I get 15d. But I'm not finished. I have to stop and I have to look. I look at my coefficients. I've got 8, and I've got 15. Is there a common factor? Nope, there's no common factor. So that's good. What about the c and the d? Is there a common factor? No, there's not. So this answer is finished. That's as far as it can go. Now I just want to show you one other way that we can do question 26 because um, we've got often have several different ways of working when we're doing algebra. So I'm just going to give myself a little bit of space to do that. So remember back when we did fractions with numbers and we had things like this. So let's suppose we've got that. When we first learned to do that, we might have multiplied the top and multiplied the bottom. Right? And then we'd find the common factor. And the common factor in here is 2, so we'd get 14 over 5. And that's fine, it works. But if the numbers are big, it's a big pain. So a better way to do that is to look at the 4 and look at the 2 and look for common factors between those two. And the common factor there is 2. So that means that we can do this, right? simplify within the fraction, and then we get straight to my answer. Now the same idea works when I'm dealing with this here. I've got 2x over 3 times 4 over x. And you can see that I've got a common factor here with the x and the x here. So x divided by x is just 1. So that gets me to my final answer of 8 thirds. It's a little bit more efficient, but it takes a while to see that. So we don't really mind which way you do it, as long as your working is really clear. Okay, I'm going to go on to the last 10 questions now. So number 28 is a substitution question. The key word here is evaluate, which means work out the value of. One thing to notice is that I'm going to have to think about bed mass. So when I see this fraction line, this is how we do division with algebra, that's like having invisible brackets around whatever's in the numerator. So we're going to start like this, and we're going to substitute in my numbers. So 3 times 4 plus b is negative 2. Oops. Let's see, what have we got? Plus negative 2 divided by 2 times negative 2. Cleaning that up gives me this, 12, take away 2, divided by negative 4, which gives me 10 over negative 4, so that's not simplified yet, so we're going to write that as um, negative 5 over 2. Now there's a pretty strong convention in maths that we always write the negative sign with the, with the numerator, okay, so that's how you should be writing that answer, or you could also write negative 2.5. Remember, we don't want to use decimals um, unless they're an exact value, so um, it's usually better to stick with fractions. So that's that one done. Next question. Now this is a, a good use of algebra, right? So often in life, um, we're using algebra whenever we do um, formulae. So if you're doing baking and you have to convert things, as we do in this question, you're using algebra without ever having known it before. So we've got a formula that tells us how to convert the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit to the equivalent temperature in degrees Celsius. So let's have a look at what we've got. This is my formula. And we're told if it is 77 degrees in degrees Fahrenheit, what's the temperature in degrees Celsius? So that means that F is equal to 77. So we're going to substitute that in here. And that will give me C is equal to 5 ninths of... 77 minus 32. So that's 5 ninths of 45. And we know 1 ninth of 45 is 5, so that gives me 5 ninths, 25 degrees C. Okay, on to questions 30 to 36. Right, so here we've got some expanding and some factorising. And I've done separate videos on these skills, so I'm going to go reasonably quickly through these ones. Here we have to multiply the 3 by each term in the brackets. So we get 3x plus 3y 
minus 3z. We do the same thing in this one. We multiply each term in here by the 2x squared. And we'll get 2x cubed minus 6x squared. Next up, we have to factorise. So when we factorise, we're working backwards. First, we look at the coefficients. We look for common factors in the numbers. Finding the highest common factor of 3 and 12 gives me 3. Next, we look at the variables. We've got x squared here, and we've got x here. What's the highest common factor? Well, it's x. Now we just work backwards, and we see what do I have to times this by to get back to 3x squared. Well, I have to times it back by x. Now what do I have to times 3x by to get minus 12x? And it will be minus 4. Let's look at number 33. 5x minus 10y minus 15. The only common factor here is 5. So my answer is going to be 5 times x minus 2y minus 3. Now we've just got a few questions left. I'll see if I can get through in 15 minutes. This is another example, number 34, of like terms. The thing to notice here is that the order in which we multiply doesn't matter. So 9ab and take away 6ba are like terms. I've got minus 6 here and minus 2 here, so they also are like terms. So cleaning all of that up gives me 3ab plus 4abc take away 8. Number 35, we're back to multiplication. Right? We want you thinking about which skill you have to use and distinguishing between these two situations. First we multiply the numbers and we get 3 twos are 6. Then we look for all of the p terms in here. So we've got p here and p here, so that gives me p squared. Next we look for the q terms. I've got q squared times q. So I get 6p squared q cubed. This one is another bed mass question. We're checking out whether you can apply the bed mass rules that seemed really easy when you had them in number to algebra. So we do what's in the brackets first. This is equal to 5 times 3b times b. And that equals 15b squared. Right, two minutes left. I wonder if I can get through the last three questions. Well, hopefully. So I'm going to go a little bit faster, guys. Just um, ask me questions in the comments if you're not sure. So looking here, I'm looking at the 24 and the 10, and I'm looking for the common factor in the, in the numbers, and it's 2. So I'm going to have 12 over 5. Now here I've got x cubed, and here I've got x. So x cubed over x leaves me with x squared here. Now I look at the y's. I've got y over y to the power of 5. Let's just think what that looks like. y over y, 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 y. Well, I've got a common factor of the y's. And this is really y times 1. So, here, I've got y cubed. Sorry. Should have been y to the power of 5. I've got y to the power of 4 in the denominator. Right, there's lots of good practice at those on Education Perfect if you need it, and lots of you probably do. Next up, I've got another of these ones where I have to multiply the fractions. So let's see what we get here. So if I look, I'm going to do this the way where I look for common factors across the fractions. The c's will simplify out, and then 10 divided by 5 is 2. So here I've got 4 d squared e over 7. You could also do that by multiplying the numerator, multiplying the denominator, and then simplifying. In this next one, we've got 32x over 15yz divided by 8x is the same as times 1 over 8x. So now we're going to simplify here, here, and here. That leaves me with 4 over 15yz. Thanks for watching. That's all I've got time for now.